Hey there everyone, we are here for another installment of Theological Thursdays where we go back and reflect upon uh, the sermon from the Sunday prior, maybe do a little bit of a deeper dive into something that stood out to us or maybe stood out to some of you as we heard feedback from you um, about that Sunday's talk. So today we are talking about the most recent installment of our Love in the Time of Corona series uh, that was preached by Matt O'Neill this last Sunday on Valentine's Day, February 14th. So, Blair, thanks for joining me in this. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. I think that Matt's sermon was great yesterday. There were so many things that surfaced for me. Um, just just thinking about this last year in terms of like this roller coaster analogy was just huge for me. That one of the things that Matt said that kind of blew up in the comments as well was this idea that reflecting and remembering are two different things. Yeah, and I think that's really, I think, poignant and meaningful for people right now because in this last year, you know, we're thinking about relationships through the lens of COVID. And one thing I hear constantly from people is the way that the pandemic has totally distorted their sense of time. Mm. And totally, you know, and, and you know, we'll get to this in a second, but Matt also made reference to the way that the Jewish people understood their 24 hour day and it's kind of a different starting point than us and, and we'll get to that in a moment but where my nerdy head went and remember this is theological Thursday. David so. has a nerdy a nerdy thought. I know, what? Weird, right? This is so new. Go on. <laughs> so where yeah, I don't have my monocle with me, but where where my nerdy head went is is to the German language, of course. Huh. Where we, one of a number of languages which unlike English raise your hand if you went to the German yeah me yeah. either okay <laughs> <laughs> the German language which unlike English has more than one word for history you know oh. so they have the word history which is how we get our word history we get it from okay. the German and that is what I think maybe maps to what Matt was saying about remembering this idea of you know what happened in some sort of linear or sequential, you know, you know, what's the data mm. of what happened? Yeah. But then they have this other word that I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of because I don't speak German, but it's, it's something. It's like Geschichte. Uh, I don't think you can say German without yelling. Geschichte. Better. Yeah. Better. Something like that. Yeah. Geschichte and Geschichte is this. It's going to sound weird saying it over and over again, but Geschichte is this idea that the meaning or the significance of history is something that we only know retrospectively. And so, almost this idea of that the future actually creates the past. And so yes, things happen, we experience them linearly, but it's not until something is kind of quilted or, or the period is put on the sentence mm -hmm. that we're able to understand the full meaning of things. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in thinking and reflecting upon Matt's point about relationships and his notion of, you know, not going to bed on our anchor and things like that. And also, you know, spent a lot of time talking about the fact that this one event, maybe this one moment of, of stumble or failure doesn't need to define us. You know, that's where my head went. You know, the, you know this nerdy, you know, relationship between these two understandings of history, our kind of linear progressive sense, and then this notion of Kashishta where where the future can actually kind of create or provide meaning for the past. That's really um, nerdy, yes. I mean, you just threw out a German word like it was nothing. But at the same time, um, there's a lot of meaning in what you're saying. And I I have been thinking, or I was thinking as Matt was talking about that whole section, there's a parent from Greenhouse that contacted me this past week. They have a 10 year old and they're trying to figure out ways to, to you know, just sift through faith mm -hmm. on a daily basis and like what's going on. And, their kids life and and kind of modeling that but also doing it with them and so we actually um there's a part of japanese culture who knew that theological thursdays was gonna have german and japanese but there's actually a part of this instantaneous reflection that they talk about mm -hmm. that's very different from remembering as well mm -hmm. and it it's of course it, it has a little more of a productivity um, edge to it in sure. the Japanese culture. It's like, what well, went well, what didn't go well. Um, but there's also in the 15th century, there was um, St. Ignatius that talked about this yeah. prayer of examining and examining every day at the end of the day, you know, where was God present and where, where did God feel absent today? 
And so that's kind of where my brain went um, because I also, I'm very, it's so easy for me to skip to, this is what I did wrong today, or this is what was terrible today, or this, you know, I never, I never think about me if I did right, mm -hmm. which is more than I probably give myself credit for, but I'm so concerned about fixing something or being better at something or, you know, so it's just kind of, it's interesting and even tied in with what you said, I think there's a piece of, I'm trying to think of the best way to say this, whenever, whenever I do reflect, even on my own personal day, um, once the period goes on there, you know, of a season even, then I can look back and say, I probably did something better than I realized. I don't know if that makes any sense. Oh, absolutely. I can see the good more so than just that. Yeah. that. And so, so, yeah, absolutely, excellent. And that's that. To me, that what you just described, kind of practically, that's that's where the theology piece comes in. Mm -hmm. You, you know. Um, Here's another big theology word for you. That's the eschatology of all of this. You know, if we're saying, if we're saying that uh, the future sort of creates the past, I think we can kind of maybe jump a step further and say, you know, it's, it's actually God who is meeting us almost from the future. You know, and so when we're talking about God being able to, um, in some sense, uh, redeem or recreate or even generate new meaning from our experiences, relational or otherwise. Uh, we're describing this weird distortion of time, you know, this idea that, you know, we're, we're serving or following a God that is in some sense either ahead or outside of our experience of time in some way and is able to, is able to meet us from that point of the period, already seeing the bigger, fuller, um, more holistic picture yeah. and, and, you know, and then, and then almost gifting that back to us in, in, in the present moment. And, Probably don't have enough time to really kind of deep dive into that. Just kind of, kind of lay it out there, you know, for further, um, I don't know, further question raising. But mm -hmm. yeah. So on that front, um, please do. Uh, if anything, Blair and I said in this reflection kind of piques your interest, uh, we'd love to hear about it in the comments. As always, we're going to do our best to uh, check in throughout the week, um, especially on these most recent videos. Check in on the comments, uh, see if any additional engagement is happening in that space, and then. Uh, as questions are raised for you in upcoming uh, Sunday morning sermons and talks, uh, please uh, email uh, Blair or myself, uh, David at watershedcharlotte.com or Blair at watershedcharlotte.com. We'd love to kind of hear where you know, your heads are going so that we can, we can speak to that during the week. I just have one last thought. Please. If we were naming episodes, I think we should name this episode. The God of Punctuation. Well, my high school English teacher approves. Thanks everyone. See you next time. Have a good week. <laughs>